PSP. Look at this massive brick. It's old, it's dusted, scratched, the analog stick is busted, one of the buttons doesn't press all the way down, but you could still pretend you are reloading a gun when swapping UMD discs. This thing has been through a lot and I loved it, but I got it as a hand-me-down and hand-me-downs are a way of life for all of us at some point or another. And it's when we're most appreciative of the consumables, grasping at any game I could get. And that's what many probably felt when they picked up their PSP at launch. Giddy from the new console jitters and Sony, giddy for people to buy them. So went the launch titles, obligatory sports games, we don't we, we don't count that, Wipeout, very nice, Ridge Racer, very nice, Need for Speed, of course, Metal Gear, that's what I'm talking about, Ape Escape, cool, yada yada, you get it, games that show off the prowess of the PSP, except for one puzzle game that was the most surprising title on the system, Luminous. Conceived by one Tetsuya Mizuguchi and developed within a year, the game itself and its association with the portable came from Mizuguchi's view of the console being an interactive Walkman, as well as commenting, Holy shit, is that a headphone jack? Mizuguchi was already an established developer in the industry, specialising in rhythm games for Sega like Space Channel 5 and Rez, and if anything could be said about him thanks to the latter, it's that he was an excellent designer of incorporating audio with the gameplay experience. So, with the PSP's secondary emphasis as a media consumption device as well as games, ideas began to fly. With with this newfound technology, he set out to make a Tetris game, but licenses didn't work out. So he said, you know what, I'll make my own Tetris game. And Luminous was conceived. How Luminous works is that a horizontal grid has falling blocks. These blocks are 2x2s two made up of 4 tiny squares, of which can be one of 2 different colours. These falling blocks will drop and accumulate in the grid. And to reduce it and gain points, you must create 2x2 two two squares of the same colour, and they will highlight and it'll even go through some squares, it just needs to be 2x2. Two two. A constantly looping timeline will then eliminate these blocks, making the rest of the upper squares fall into their place, sometimes even to make new 2x2 two two blocks, which will then be eliminated. It's this constant rush to get these blocks eliminated and to get away from the top, which, like Tetris, results in a game over if it's breached. When you gain enough points, the background will change, as well as the song. The timeline will either increase or decrease in speed depending on the skin were having the effects of less time to make combos, or too much time which can fill the playing field fast. When you move or rotate a block, a sound effect adding to the current track will play, fusing the gameplay and music together to immerse you, hence the subtitle, Puzzle Fusion. The challenge mode, aka campaign, can last from several minutes to up to an hour or two depending on the player's skill. With only a team of 4-5 to five people and finished within a year, Luminous would release to the masses to critical and, for puzzle game standards, commercial success. It was a darling with the critics and players, and a fantastic alternative to the Falling Block King at the time. It is quite rare to see a new, original and addictive puzzle game nowadays, and it still was back when Luminous released. And it was such a breath of fresh air compared to Tetris, and that is how it gained a following. Anyways, fuck this game, you actually probably know what it is. I don't want to talk about this Luminous, I want to talk about this Luminous. But before that, Luminous Live, an enhanced port of the PSP game on Xbox 360 with some new songs, modes and minor improvements. Luminous 2, a sequel to the PSP game with new songs from bigger artist names like Black Eyed Peas and Hooperstank. The game also has some new modes and minor improvements. Luminous Supernova, a port of Luminous Live to the PS Store with online multiplayer removed but with the sequence feature from 2, with a new mode and some minor improvements. You can see a pattern forming now. Luminous was following in the footsteps of Tetris after that game's success. Make a new one for a new console with only incremental improvements that adds to the experience but doesn't justify a new purchase. It's essentially buying a game just for the sake of having it on a new system. Something needed to change. An article by Gamma Sutra detailed lots of this game's conception and development, so I'll be taking reference from that. So let's set the scene. James Mielk, I don't know if I pronounced that right, Producer at developer Q Entertainment had envisioned a reboot of Luminous. He noticed the decline of the magic that Luminous had, with criticisms such as just another Luminous game with new skins and new music making rounds in every new installment since the original. So to combat this, instead of having a whole array of artists and music to choose from, this next game would be solely focused and devoted to one artist. Bit of a risky move, but James was a confident man. Initially, concepts were being made to make a Luminous game solely focused on and starring musical duo, get this, Daft Punk. This was real. Series creator Mizuguchi actually met with the duo prior to this, and both parties were actually on board to proceed with the project. What was envisioned was, quote, to put the player in the cockpit of Daft Punk's pyramid-shaped DJ booth that they toured with, and, as Daft Punk, rocked the crowd by performing big combos in Luminous. 
Everything in the game was going to be Daft Punkified, from the HUD, to the soundtrack, to the bassy oral ambience found in their 2007 Alive live album, to the special effects, real-time lighting, and bouncing 3D crowd. That touchscreen was going to be used to mess with the lighting and sound effects in real time. Now, what device has a batch touchscreen, you may ask? Oh, we'll get back to this. Literally, felt like if Daft Punk made a Luminous game. It sounded like an absolute dream combination. But most unfortunately, plans fell through. James mentions using Daft Punk's already created music as the heft of the game's audio, but the music duo wasn't planning to take the easy way out with that. They insisted on creating new music for the game. This sounded like a win-win. Daft Punk was so huge that people would flock to the game in search of new tunes, and gamers would also get to experience a new and improved proper iteration of Luminous. However, things didn't pan out this way. If you know anything about Daft Punk in this era, everyone, and I mean everyone, wanted a piece of them. DP were making their own album whilst also making a soundtrack for Disney's Tron. They couldn't handle the pressure of making music for three things at once, so the groups agreed to split and drop the idea, despite being very cooperative. Knowing that, it's sad to imagine what could have been one of the greatest mergers of music and video games, but Q Entertainment had to move on. Regardless, the intention of the collaboration showed that this new game was going all in with an EDM score. In a pitch meeting with Ubisoft, the new Luminous game without Daft Punk was still greenlit. It didn't have the French duo, but the publisher still gave the go-ahead for what would be dubbed as Luminous Electronic Symphony. Thanks to that article, there is a lot to this game's development, so I'm gonna go through the brief details. The naming of this game was born out of a desire for Luminous to go to space. The name the team almost went with was Luminous Electro Light Orchestra before considering Mr. Blue Sky would tell them where they went wrong if you know what I mean. So they renamed it to the finalised title. Early on, it was planned for the game to be structured like a journey, going from theme to theme every few songs. The order was Molecule, Seed, Flower, Oceans, Sky, Civilization, Astra, Nebula, Heavens and beyond, and would tell a story with philosophical meanings. Examples given would be a Civilization skin with crumbling wireframes signifying humanity's self-immolation. It's deeper than it needs to be. This would also mean new gameplay opportunities. In the Astro phase, where humans go to space, the blocks would flip upside down signifying humans defying gravity, and the blocks would fall upside down. That sounded pretty cool. They even thought of the blocks falling into the centre, but decided against these changes as they didn't feel like luminous. James notes that many things weren't implemented for that reason, which kinda sucks. They were really were ambitious in making this different and unique. Internally, things were quite shaky. Child of Eden, a sequel to Res, was still in development and didn't want to wrap up, so the producers decided to bring on an external development studio, Rocket Studios, made up of former Hudson developers and gaming veterans. As well as this, Q Entertainment decided to bring on an external director. While this didn't seem too bad, as Q and they had similar views on the game, the director would end up not being a good fit for the project. James outlines that he would make arbitrary decisions and not put emphasis on things that mattered, as well as slow down the development team. The Ubisoft director came to replace him and sped things up almost immediately, letting the team make more skins, be more experimental with the visuals, and did all this with time to spare. Times really do change, don't they Ubisoft? The strict rule during development was not to have anything that resembled nostalgia, in this instance music or skins that were from previous Luminous games. It was positively a reboot, which meant the iconic song of the series, Shine In by Mondo Grosso, was sadly cut. The music used in the game was an entire other affair. They needed 33 or 34 songs, but also needed backup songs in case some licensing deals didn't work out about 5 for each skin. The total list came out to around 250 potential songs and the chosen ones needed to be mixed with the player's inputs as a series tradition. Luckily, the sound team did a great job with it. Go you! It was a very impressive list of artists too, featuring songs from The Chemical Brothers, LCD Sound System, Cascade, Benny Benassi, Aphex Twin, even without Daft Punk, lots of pretty respected names here. I think I've talked long enough. On the 22nd of February 2012, Luminous Electronic Symphony was released on the PlayStation Vita at launch. Sounds going to be a bit weird from here on out, and I hope this little recording thought that I made does its job. But it's, th it's thundering outside, and it's raining a lot, so I'm going to have to work with what I'm given. Electronic Symphony Welcome Bless One little pet peeve, the menus must be navigated by the touch screen, which kinda sucks, but th this is Electronic Symphony It's gonna be the theme and the vibe 
and it's a different, very much a different vibe from the original. The menus in that game, even in the re remaster, were active and bustling. You wanted to jump around in the game. ES decided to relax the player in a zen mood before jumping in. And jump in we will. Electronic Symphony's main star of the show is the campaign, Voyage. It takes you through all the main songs with their own skin, sound effects and experiences as is serious tradition. And we don't have time to go through all the songs here. There's 34 of them. Okay, I'll just go through them, it's just just a few of them. So we've got Future of the Future. It's not as iconic as Shining, but it definitely sets the vibe for the game. Good Girl, bit of a step up in pacing and feel, but it's not too drastic. Moistly, this is a this is a vibe. It's nice and calm beats. I can pretty much get behind this. 4AM steps us up a little bit more. Much calmer, much softer, much nicer. Uh, in My Arms, this is putting the D in EDM. This one, this one just slaps. It's not heavy, but... It's, it's good to move to. Sunrisers, pretty good. Hey boy, hey girl. And um, fun fact, I showed this game to someone years ago and this song actually kind of creeped them out. Maybe it's got to do with the lyrics because it's kind of weird, but it's fucking Chemical Brothers. So I'm, 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 I'm accepting of it. I need to work on a stutter. Autumn Love, it's unique, interesting, it's calm, it's nice, standout. It's pretty good. Disco Infiltrator. This was my introduction to LCD sound system and I'm glad it was this one. This song is amazing, but the full speed is sped up way too much. It's fucking bullshit. Yesterday when I was mad, good. Window Licker, amazing. Played Alive. This song was the starter in the demo and it's not top tier. The skin is really cool though. Watching this robot wreck havoc on a city and then keep zooming out when the game progresses. It's really good. Close, I love this one. It feels like a factory in its very steady pace. Embracing the future, this one's also great. It's quite all over the place though, but I do like it. Automatons, this one can fuck right off. The blocks fall quick and the timeline is so slow. This is where I die so many times in this game. Sunrising, good. Pacific, 717, I don't know, 707, it's good. Look, I'm sorry, the point is, the music and skins in Electronic Symphony, for the most part, are excellent and you won't be disappointed in the music choices. As for the gameplay, it's definitely luminous, but with actual additions this time. It's the standard make 2x2 two two squares of the same colour and have them eliminated by timeline, get a high score, blah, blah, blah. it's the marathon we know as luminous. However, the chain blocks functionality has slightly changed. The chain block is our friend. How it works is that it's assigned a colour and when making a 2x2 two two with the chain block, it would connect all of the similarly coloured squares, not blocks, squares horizontal or vertical to it. This is a very useful tool needing strategy to plan its execution. You play the long game with it, but in Electronic Symphony, you don't need to make the 2x2 two two to make it work. Just connect it to a corresponding color and you're set. Thank you. I played Electronic Symphony before the original and when doing that in the OG and it didn't do anything, just, I, I was completely dumbfounded. I could not go back to the original after this. There was also the addition of the shuffle block. This was a bit of a point of contention for many. On the one hand, Luminous players who strategically place their blocks down in order to create massive combos will have them messed up by the shuffle, which does as its name implies, shuffles the squares randomly. On the other hand, it's incredibly useful if you're stuck in a rut where your placement options are getting quite scarce. If the shuffle comes to the rescue, let's just say that your combos will become more than massive in some cases. But I agree, it does kind of undo some of the work, if that's your playstyle. Though, for getting combos, it can be a real gamble. Another addition is the ability to summon shuffle blocks, chain blocks, or any other power-up that's available to you if you have it charged up. See, Luminous games have this icon at the bottom left, commonly the boy. 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 They were usually indicating how you were doing on a whim and add a bit of character, but generally are cosmetic to say the least. In Electronic Symphony, these icons mean and hold power-ups that can be used if you tap them on the touchscreen. Next block will take effect. It charges up on its own, but tapping rapidly on the back touchscreen speeds up the process. This is a really good addition and I don't know why it wasn't added earlier. To clarify, the power-up on demand, not the back tapping. This lets players plan out their strategies more effectively, more or less. Shuffle block. Knowing that they don't need to leave the chance for when the chain block will appear. Some power-ups will let you summon the shuffle, so this doesn't remove it from the rotation when it really should. Some let you stop the timeline, others let you hold the blocks for longer, and others can make the next three blocks single-coloured, also known as free points. These icons also have a dual ability, messing up your opponent if you're playing an ad hoc. But who's really doing that in this year? No one's playing this game this year, why am I talking about it? But that's Voyage done. What else does Electronic Symphony offer to players? 
Well, in the more modes, we have Master Mode, a series of brutal gauntlets that test your speed and your ability to sustain the field in hard conditions that get faster and faster as time goes on. Sort of like Wipeout Zone Mode. We've got Duel, which is ad hoc multiplayer. Online multiplayer Luminous was considered, but Q Entertainment didn't have anyone experience in that field, so they settled on ad hoc. Stopwatch is what you think it is, do what you can in a limited number of seconds. And Playlist, doing the Luminous base game in any order you want to. There's a collection menu where you can gift other players, such as your friends' avatars and stuff. Kind of pointless, especially now. There's also the World Block, a virtual big square block that gets chipped away by your contributions by playing the game. It's cool, but since there's very, and I mean very few people, if anyone, playing at all, which I'll get to, it's sort of pointless this year. There's also leaderboards, but that's standard affair. And sadly, that's kind of the entire game. As I said, Voyage Mode is the star of the show here. The game is akin to a nice, dense, small but expertly made and delicious cake where the cake itself is amazing and difficult to fault. The icing is also fantastic, exemplifying the dedication Q Entertainment took to make this game look as good as it plays. But it's just one flavour. Critically, this game's reception would reflect this. Eights, nines and even tens were thrown around for this game. Outlet said it, despite sufficient side modes, Voyage was the luminous gameplay at its absolute apex and couldn't be commended enough for it. It was addictive, it was strong, confident in its presentation. Commercially, we don't actually know of any of the game's sales. The only game in the series that has confirmed sales figures is the first game, 500k in 2005. The series as a whole has sold 2.5 million, but aside from the first game, sales for each are a bit of a mystery. Though I am confident that this particular game had some middling sales. Why? Well, the last few Luminous games were sold on popular consoles. The PSP was a success, and the PS2 was the best-selling console of all time. The Xbox 360 was incredibly popular, and so was the PS3. Luminous Electronic Symphony was a launch title for the PlayStation fucking Vita. The PS Vita, man, who the fuck owns a PS Vita? I don't own one. I own two. One with a physical handicap. Yeah, this is where the last original Luminous game was released on, mirroring the original release on a portable. Made for one hell of a launch title, since Luminous sessions can last a pretty long while. But let's be real, at launch of a console which is advertised to be a PS3 in your pocket, people wanted the kill zones, the Uncharted's, the wipeouts. This game, it's good, but it wasn't really what people were expecting. But this is where the story of this game begins to decline much further. DLC was planned for Electronic Symphony, but never came to fruition, which is a pretty big blow. An expansion to Voyage would have been amazing, judging by the base game's music selection. This DLC plan ranged from 6 month episodic releases to a 12 month rollout of new skins, and Shinin was also included as DLC. Japanese pop groups are also planned to be asked to be included in the game, but these decisions were, as James said, in the hands of publisher Ubisoft, who wanted to see the Vita's retail success. And we know how that turned out. This article was published not long after Electronic Symphony's release, so it seemed like Ubisoft was still waiting. This didn't really matter anyway though, because by the time the article came out, the Luminous team at Q disbanded, as James outlines its unlikeliness of DLC. This is what leads me to believe Electronic Symphony did not succeed at retail. It came out, sales figures were not released, and the team moved on. When it comes to original entries, Luminous as a series ended on such a suppressed high note. There hasn't been an original entry since Electronic Symphony. It should have been 2004 all over again. It was Q Entertainment's magnum opus, something that should have revitalised them as leaders and innovators in the puzzle game space. And it was, but they didn't get the rave they deserved. Puzzle games like Luminous, to the majority of people, are a little bit of a hard sell, but they do have their audience and even their appeal. Everyone knows what a Tetris is, so as to why Electronic Symphony wasn't a smash hit at retail is puzzling. Even so, people who do talk about the series always talk about the first game, but rarely what came after it. The Luminous IP was sold to Mobcast, who would develop a well-received mobile game title with it, but I, I didn't even know it existed or even came out, so there's that. Tetsuya Mizuguchi moved on from Q Entertainment and founded Enhance Inc, where he would work on Res Infinite, a remaster playable in VR, a Luminous remaster, and once again would say, you know what, I'll make my own Tetris game, but actually did it this time. So, it's safe to say that the legacy and impact that Luminous had on its developers and puzzle games as a whole wasn't skipped on. But, most unfortunately, Luminous Electronic Symphony was delisted off the PlayStation Store sometime in 2018. This fascinating, moving, 
visually and audibly gorgeous game is no longer available for purchase and hasn't been for the past three years. The only way to play this game is to hunt down a physical copy. The point is, it will probably become a little bit rare. The other way to play it is to do something which I can't really endorse and something you lawfully should not do, but let's be real, if you have a PS Vita in 2021, you've already hacked it, you might as well go ahead. But I mean, even if you could buy it or play it, Sony wanted to pull the plug on the PS Vita and PS3 stores this summer before changing course, which still shows that they are intent on shutting them down. PS Vita and PS3 stuff isn't even on their web store, just PS4 and PS5, so if you want to use some sketchy bypassing method, I won't blame you. But this is where Luminous is today, the original was remastered with the series creator at the helm and it was definitely a nice jump back to the classic, but to me, that's classic Luminous. Vanilla, it's good, it's Luminous for crying out loud, better be good, but it was iterated and improved upon massively in Electronic Symphony. A game which is no longer being sold, which didn't get the recognition it deserved, which doesn't have the following it should. It's an unjust death to what is essentially a love letter to an entire genre of music, which is also a developer's passion to iterate and offer essentially satisfying experience to players with one of the best puzzle games around. So I am here to say that Luminous Electronic Symphony is fucking fantastic and you should find a way to play it immediately. By extension, you should play Luminous Remastered, it's only a tenor on Steam, the series could really use some love. Please.